In this tutorial, you are of course going to learn how to create an animation like this. So I personally think metaballs are underused a lot, especially with these cool little motion graphic animations. This is our final scene inside Blender. And as you can see, there's a lot happening here, but we're gonna focus on this animation right here, right? And if you want to get access to this whole file, you can just go to the Patreon and download it via there. So let's jump into a new Blender file and learn how to create this animation. So let's start with creating our animation. The first thing that we need is we need a meta ball. So let's delete this default cube and add a meta ball here. They come in different shapes and sizes, but we're gonna choose the ball. So this is a meta ball and you can see that they are different than just normal spheres. And if you duplicate one, then you can see that they interact with each other. If you look into edit mode, you can see that there are two circles. We have our selection circle. So if you select it, then you can move it around, scale it up and all that stuff. And we have our influence circle, which is the middle one. This one only kind of depicts how much influence it has on the other meta ball. So if you scale it down or up, you can see that it scales it up and down and kind of shows when it starts to interact with this other meta ball. So meta balls could be very handy for animations like fluid animations, um, if you don't want to use the fluid simulation, but also you could use them to sketch in 3D. So if I wanna, let's make a little bit of a weird looking lag here. I like a little alien lag with three small toes here. Then, um, yeah, this is kind of a nice sketch. And if you just select one of them, right click and convert to mesh, now it is a mesh. And now with this kind of basic sketch that you created, you can start to sculpt it um, or decimate it to create some better topology. But um, yeah, that is what you also can do. So it's can, it can be very powerful, let's say. But in this case, we're just gonna use one meta ball. We can actually move it a little bit over here because this is going to be our parent particle. Let's add a mesh UV sphere. And this is going to be the emitter of our particle system. So go down here into particle properties and create a new particle system. If you have your timeline open and click on the space bar, you can see that now it starts to emit these halos. But if you go to render, we don't want to render as halo, we want to render as object. And our instance object should be our newly created M ball, right? Our meta ball. These meta balls are very small and you can barely see what is happening. So we're gonna put the scale to one. And now the scale of these meta balls here are exactly the same as this one. I personally like to also have some randomness in here because the more randomness you can see that it creates a way more interesting kind of uh, flow. We don't only want to animate just this water or whatever, this liquid falling down, right? We also want to animate the sphere or the emitter itself. So make sure you put show emitter off and that is for later on when rendering, then we don't see this sphere in our render later. And we can go into our modifier properties and hide this particle system for right now. We want to animate the sphere and the way that we want to do it, we want to create a path. So shift A, curve and circle. You can scale the circle up by maybe 10 or five. So somewhere around here, then rotate it around the X axis for 90 degrees. Now, if you click one, we are in our front view and here we can start to animate this sphere. So select the sphere, go into object constraint properties, add an object constraint and this is going to be follow path. Select as target our newly created circle. And here you can see that it jumps right here. So why do we want this? Well, we want to animate this with the offset. Zero is the beginning of the whole path. So that is down here. And at an offset of hundred, we reach the end of our path. And then it just keeps going and going. So we need to first think about how long we want the animation to take. I want to do 120 frames. Then at frame zero, I will do an offset of zero, insert keyframe, and at our last frame, an offset of a hundred. Right click, insert keyframe. So now if we play, you can see that it starts and ends here. This beginning and end is quite slow and that is because our interpolation mode is set at Bejay. We're gonna put it as linear. So now the speed is all the time the same, as you can see. Let's unhide our particle system and see what the particles are actually doing. So here we can start playing it. 
you can see that it already starts to look quite cool. The problem is, our animation, yeah, is working as we already said, but these particles are falling down, and I think it's just a bit too much. So I'm gonna select my sphere, go back into the particle properties, and I will go to the field weights and put the gravity to zero. Now if you play it, you can see that they will not fall down, but they do expand quite rapidly. That is because the velocity is set at 1 ms. We're gonna put this to 0.1. I still want them to expand a little bit, but just not too much. And here we can see the result. So you can see it still uh, yeah, expands a little bit, but just not in extremities. I also like to go to physics and do a little bit of Brownian. So Brownian is the amount of random erratic particle movement. And I would like some randomness in the movement of the particle. So 0.1 will be fine. As last, I want you to think about the number. So if you have less frames, you might want to put the number down anyways, right? But in this case, maybe 500 or 700 will already look very cool. And that is totally up to you. The problem is the meta balls themselves seem like a little bit a low resolution. So what you could do is go back to the M ball, go into the object data properties of the M ball itself, and then play around with the resolution. So you can see that the higher the number of the resolution, the lower the resolution actually is. And if you put it lower, you can see that now it starts to get nice and crisp. So the render I put at 0 0.05 or 0 0.1. You don't want to put it too low in the render viewport because then uh, just your preview is gonna be too slow. Okay, so this seems to be fine. You can see it has a little bit of a hiccup, but that is just, uh, that has nothing to do with this. So if you're happy with your end result, what you could do is select your sphere, go into the particle properties, and then go to cache, and start to bake this. Sometimes when you're baking a certain uh, animation, you need to save your file first, and I would highly recommend that anyways, but um, in this case, you don't really need to. But now it is saved, so we don't need to recalculate this whole animation over and over, and we can just jump to any frame that we want. So this is essentially the whole animation. What I now want to show you is just a very simple background. I'm not gonna go all over this whole scene here because it's just too much but as I said before when you are a part of the Patreon you can just download this whole scene right and really go into depth but you can see that I like to play around with different kinds of um, materials and also different kinds of roughnesses right so you can see that these spheres here for instance are quite um, yeah shiny as well as these are but here I have a more of a rough kind of material and this background is even more rough, right? Like almost no reflections are shown on here. So if you make a simple scene like this, different kinds of materials, different roughnesses can really stand out. And that is essentially everything that you need to know to create this animation, right? You can just create another torus in here, rotate it around the x-axis, scale it up. Let's look if it's in the middle, around here. Right click, shade smooth. If you want to inflate or deflate a certain object, you can also do it in edit mode, kinda. It's just when you scale, but click on Alt S instead of S, you can see that it now scales differently, right? It kinda inflates or deflates. So we can make it smaller like this. We can also grab a new one and then do the same, Alt S, and just make it even smaller, like this. Now we can create some extra materials. So shading, create a material for these M balls, new, just black. Roughness goes up. Then for this outer torus, we're gonna just do a nice glass shader. And because I personally like to work inside cycles, let's go to cycles and put the device to GPU, go into the rendered viewport shading and select this middle little torus. And here we're gonna do like a nice copper color. So maybe something like that. Metal goes high and then roughness goes also high. So maybe 0.6. Awesome, so here uh, we of course do not have enough light in here to actually see what is happening. So go into world, add an environment texture and open a HDRI. This HDRI is downloadable, just look in the description down below. And here the only thing that we need now is just a big cube, delete this edge or these two vertices and then we can scale this up even more. And this is going to be our studio. So add a bevel. Now this gets beveled. You can play around with the amount and segments, make it nice and smooth. 
And that is essentially everything that we need, right? So also this can have a material. Go back to your render, play around with your camera here. And that is it, guys. So now you can just start to render. So I hope you guys learned something. If you did, please like, subscribe. I got way more coming up. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.